Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Elizabeth. I'm a flight attendant for a major US carrier. Today is day one. I have PM reserve and I was assigned a trip. So we have to be at the airport at 1.55. It is currently 9 a.m. I'm gonna run to the grocery store to get supplies and we'll be on our way. never end do they just never end they just never end so stockings in the background it's December 14th I'm getting caught up on my videos which makes me happy um, I'm gonna put this stuff away and then I'll show you what I got for this trip I know I've had some requests to um, do a vlog or just show you what I get for flying so let me put away the other groceries and I will Give you the rundown on what I got for this three-day trip. Okay, so here's what I got. I got some bread, and I'm going to make myself a sandwich for today. Um, I might make myself one for tomorrow. I don't know. We'll figure that out for the plane. Then tonight, I will have the sushi. I always have sushi. And then tomorrow morning in Orange County, I'll make myself a breakfast burrito. And then I've got to figure out what I'm going to eat tomorrow while flying. But that's why I got things like... The, I was gonna make myself a little charcuterie kind of set up. I think I can split that in half and um, use that for a snack either today and then have it for a snack for flying. Um, one of the days I'm flying, either day two or three. And then I got, I have wheat thins from my pantry and then I got some yummy cheese spread that I'll eat with the wheat thins. Um, I got some berries to snack on. And then I grabbed something sweet. I grabbed some of those dark chocolate peppermint covered pretzels and these, we don't serve those, I love them. So I just got some snacks and then I've got some bars from our diet plan that we're not currently on that I'll throw in there as well. And then I'll probably eat dinner in the hotel in Detroit. Stop by Jimmy John's to get a sandwich on my way to work, and this time the keys are in my pocket because I'm not locking myself out again. <laughs> nope, not happening. I was so excited that I got good parking. I was gonna say hi from the parking lot. We are back in the Denver East Economy lot. Um, basically, they didn't have enough bus drivers to staff Pikes Peak parking lot during this Christmas season. So they put us here. Then they took all the bus drivers from the employee lot and put them on the paid lot for all the travelers. So, that's where I am, back in the East Economy lot. It's beautiful out. So let's go into work.
right, so we did a crew change and we're doing three on this flight, I think on this plane, Boise, Oakland, Orange County. My phone battery is dying and I forgot my charger, so I might not see you again to the hotel. All right, tip number one if you're going to in-flight training is for me is to get as much sleep as possible. I know you wanna study and stay up, but you need to make sure that you're getting the rest that you need. So make sure that you are getting the sleep you need, setting the alarms you need, and just making sure of taking care of yourself so you don't get sick and you are just as sharp as possible during class. So that's tip number one if you're going to in-flight training. Orange County, we're here, we made it. Uh, what time is it? It's like 9.22, I think. Yep, that clock is actually right. It's actually about 9.25. We have to be in the lobby at 7 a.m. I am tired. I'm starving. Our flights were so fast today, there wasn't really time to eat. So I'm gonna eat and then go to bed. But here's my second tip for anyone going to new hire in-flight training. Cut yourself some slack. In-flight training is stressful, it's hard. So you need to have some grace and mercy with yourself. You're probably gonna have times that you break down and cry. Let yourself do it, but give yourself a break. They want you to be there. They're spending a lot of money training you to be a flight attendant. So no matter what carrier that you're training for, give yourself a break. Good morning, everybody. So it is 6.52. We have to be downstairs at 7. So I'm going to head out. We are actually in a building next to the main building. And I wanted to see if I can get, if I have time to grab coffee. But it was a short overnight. I just ate and I watched a show and talked to my husband and went to bed. Uh, we have four today on our way to Detroit and I will bring you another flight attendant training tip when we're on the ground. I think Kansas City we have an hour and a half but um, our first flight we don't serve because it's under 250 miles and our last flight we don't serve because it's under 250 miles. So even though it's a four leg day hopefully hopefully it's not that bad. All right let's head out. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done Oh, the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right the future is bright oh, You and I, we got it oh, We don't need no more oh, Even in the hard times You and I can weather any storm Before I sleep Hear the crickets, see the moon Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us great So we were just joking with our pilots that you know it's a short overnight when the plane you brought in last night is the one you're taking out this morning. And that's exactly what we're doing. This is the exact same plane we came in on last night. So for now it's all clean, ready to go for, like I said earlier, to <clears throat> Detroit. And my next training tip is to learn the material that they send you in advance of training. If the company you're flying for sends you announcements, whatever it might be, procedures, city codes, learn them before you get to training, please. <laughs> um, it just will help alleviate some of the stress of having to memorize that material and the material you are learning in training. And it will just put you one step ahead of your classmates. So learn the material, any material that's sent to home, sent home to you in advance, learn that. So. This first flight today is from Orange County to Vegas. 
It's under 250 miles, so we're gonna sit and wake up. Got my coffee, and yeah, I will see you guys probably in Kansas City, because we have ground time there. So let's get day two moving. It is so windy here in Kansas City. We served going from Orange County to Kansas City, and then I was able to run through with one trash bag, and then we had to sit for the rest of the flight because it was so bumpy. Um, it is so windy, it's, it feels like we're on a cruise ship. <laughs> so this should be interesting. All right, two more to go. All right, so we're on our last flight. We just changed planes. So we just, we're in Chicago now. And we just came in from Kansas City and it was shorter. It was an hour and 20 minute flight. And um, it was so bumpy, we didn't serve on that one. Uh, it was 61 mile an hour winds when we left Kansas City. And then we also, hi, hey Will, hey. And then <laughs> we found out when we landed that crew scheduling had changed our schedule. So we went from 21 hours and 45 minutes in Detroit to seven hours and 58 minutes. So basically we're gonna go to Detroit and have a nap. They changed our whole flying for tomorrow. We have to report at the airport at 5.20 a.m. and we work Detroit to Baltimore, Baltimore to Orlando, and then we're deadheading from Orlando to Denver. But we only have a 25 minute connection. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if they'll hold it. We just held a plane for deadheads. Um, it does get us home tomorrow at 2.30. That's like way too late to nap. I don't know, but. All right, next tip. Find a buddy, find a support system when you're in in-flight training. So that if you're struggling, you have someone you can go to and ask for help. They used to always call the people who failed out of in-flight training ghosts because you didn't know that they were in trouble and then they just disappeared. So if you are going to training, find a support system so that you can if you're in trouble, you can go to them and say, hey, I need extra help with this, or I am struggling with that, so that you don't just disappear. But, all right, I will talk to you guys in Detroit. All right, so we're in Detroit, and we're basically here for a nap. It is currently, let me look. It is currently 10.10, and we have to be in the lobby at, I think, 5.15. I'll have my cami. Yeah, 5.15. So I did order food because that was my plan tonight anyways. Um, tomorrow's going to hurt. So we legally have to have eight hours of rest. So they're going to, they're actually, the airline is, they are making our report in the morning legal, which means the flight will probably leave late. So they're basically delaying the flight in the morning so that we're legal. Um, we're double time all day tomorrow which is nice, but it's still gonna be a super long day tomorrow. And we work Detroit to Baltimore, Baltimore to Orlando, and then we deadhead from Orlando to Denver. But here's the thing, there's only 25 minutes to connect for us between after we deplane our whole plane in Orlando, then we have to get off and run over to our deadhead gate. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Interesting, interesting, okay. So I have another tip. I had somebody who, one of our RB on this flight, he is working his second trip. So he just went through training. So I have a tip from him. Um, bring stock up on vitamins because you're gonna get run down from the lack of sleep. So vitamins, have vitamins, cough drops, all those kinds of things with you in training so that if you need them, that you have them. So again, keep those vitamins pumping, make sure that you're drinking plenty of water and not just eating tons of junk food. So, um, and then also this is another good one. Listen to the instructors, don't talk back, which should be a no brainer, but, um, and ask questions. So again, ask your instructors questions. If, if you don't know something, ask for clarification. All right, I'm gonna get food and then we'll see if I see you in the morning. <laughs> Or if I see you when we get to Baltimore. We have two hours in Baltimore. So I'll see you soon. All right, so I had to come on here and say, well, dang. It's probably good we're not staying here for 21 hours because 
These aren't very good. Fries aren't bad, but I mean, yeah. Oh well. Good morning, it's 4.50 a.m. It's kind of echoey, I'm in the bathroom. It's still super dark and it's dark in the room. I wanted to give a shout out to a passenger yesterday. I'm not even sure who it was, pardon me, but they came on board with gifts for the flight attendant. I think these days we just hear about all the animosity and, and passengers punching flight attendants, but there, I've had some really great passengers in general. But um, she gave us, I'm pretty sure it was a she, I didn't see them. Um, there was five of us and they had these mugs. I'll put a picture here. I'm gonna see if I can get a, a picture of it, but it was like a mug, those, um, like those stemless wine glass, but like a thermal, and it had planes for our airlines on it and airport codes for everywhere everywhere we go. Now there weren't, there were three of those and five of us. So I let my A flight attendant have that because he's not eating sugar. <laughs> and so I got this, the Harry and David Moose Munch, and then there was a cute little card and a Visa gift card for $50. I have never in my life gotten anything like this. I've gotten Starbucks gift cards a couple times, but um, let's see if I can rotate out of the bathroom. It's kind of echoey, but I just wanted to come on and give a shout out. Um, I don't know who that person was, but I just hope that they know that it was super appreciated. All right, so today we have three home. Uh, we work... Detroit to Baltimore, sit for two hours, or otherwise known as get food, Baltimore to Orlando, and then we run to our deadhead flight home. So I'm on the plane in Detroit, and unfortunately, our B seems to have overslept. We were in the lobby and at the van at 5.15, he wasn't there. We went and called his room, so we had to come to the airport, the A and I, and so we'll see. I don't know we're already delaying this flight so that we could be legal so hopefully he can get here quickly we'll see what happens not fun he's gonna feel awful and he's on probation I think he'll be okay but I feel bad for him so we made it to our second plane we're working Baltimore to Orlando and then we rush off this plane and run to our deadhead. Deadhead is where we sit in a seat like a passenger. We have a seat like a passenger in order to get us home. We're all really tired. Um, I will explain reduced rest probably after I get home and <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> I'm so sleepy, but we're gonna get started. Last working flight of the day. I was editing this video and realized that I forgot to come back and explain reduced rest. So reduced rest, right now, currently, when this video was recorded, and I think even still now, it is February, um, the minimum overnight for a flight attendant per the FAA is eight hours. Now that eight hours starts when the plane sets the brake and ends when you get when our report time is at the airport. So for this particular trip in Detroit, they had us call when we landed so they know when, you know, they could check obviously, they can see the, through the computer when we blocked in and then they determined when our report time was the next day. So we should we could stay legal. So since then it has passed that the flight attendant's minimum reduced overnight the minimum overnight is 10 hours now. So that won't go into effect for our company until July. Our union and the company finally hammered out the rules for that. Uh, when you're a union, when you have a union that, you know, even all the rules have to go through the union and have to be written so they can be put in our contract. So that'll be nice. That starts in July. Um, but I just wanted to jump on and add this to the video and explain reduced rest. So that means that we got double time for the whole next day. So you, if you have a reduced rest, if you're at that eight hours, again, minimum eight hours. So they delayed the flight the next day out of Detroit so we could have eight hours. We were making double time until we got 
adequate rest, which in our case was going home. It was go home day. So that was nice. Um, all right. See you in the sky.